What's up everybody, Peter Gilmore here for another video, right here, on Killer O Demon 669. Thank you all for watching this video on this late Monday night. Thank you all for watching. Make sure you like this video, hit that subscribe button down below, and subscribe to all my other channels, all four of them, not seven, four, down below. Show your support. And check out all my my videos, especially my new video that I put on my Peter Gilmore backup channel. Like that, like that video, my burial of that shaggy-haired faggot named Mark Pearson. And there will be a part two. So check that out. Links in the description. All right. On this late Monday night, it is time, as always on Monday night or early Tuesday morning, it is time for your late night, Monday night, raw review for October the 6th, 2014, as we, are on the, as we are on the road to hell in a cell, as Vince McMahon would say many moons ago. So this show was live from the Barclays Center in Brooklyn, New York, only about 25 minutes away from... from well, not 20, but, well, just a hop, skip, and jump from my house, you know, so, because I live in Jersey, you know, just, all I have to do is just take, take the, uh, the patch crane in, boom, done, I'm in, so, so, you know, Roar started off hot, then once again got slow, and then it really picked up with a certain... Great One's shocking appearance. Then turned to shit again, and then near the end got progressively better. So tonight was a mixed bag of of uh, performance from Raw. Uh, we we started with a video showing uh, Dean Ambrose tricking Seth Rollins uh, with the slime in the briefcase from last week. Seth opens in and gets slime in his face. So right after that. We see Seth Rollins come to the ring, and he is pissed. So he said that on WWE.com uh, that he was going to come out in a tirade and, you know, basically call up Dean Ambrose. So he comes out, and he says he thinks that the fans uh, think what Dean did him last week was funny. The fans are like, yay, yes, it was. And then he says, well, take a look at this. And he shows um, him and the authority beating the crap out of Cena and... Ambrose with curb stomps on the briefcase from last week, and the fans are like, boo. And we see Seth, and I was like, hey, look like what I did. You know. And he says, that's what happens when you disrespect him. Don't disrespect my daughter. You know. And he says, well, I'm a patient man, but you don't mess with me. Uh, then we see Jamie Noble and Joey Mercury at ringside. For some odd reason, I guess they want him to go to the back, or for some odd reason. Then Seth says he, he's the future of WWE, and then he sees Joey Mercury and Jamie Noble at ringside. He tells them that he has a target on his back, and he loves it. All eyes are on him, and then everyone wants a piece of him. And he talks about Dean Ambrose and wanting to get the, gets a piece of him. Then he's, being, he's about to talk again, but then John Cena comes out, and they, they start going at it, but Seth runs through the crowd... And then he mocks Cena a little bit, but then Dean Ambrose is like, doo -doo 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 -doo. Hi, I'm Dean Ambrose. I'm the Titty Master. Yes, he is the Titty Master, but not a master like I am. But then, so he stands next to him and Seth doesn't know it, but then he turns around, Woo! You know, and then um, he starts beating him up through the crowd. He sends him over the barricade with Cena. Well, actually, he goes through goes back to the barricade, and Cena brings him over, and Dean <laughs> dies on the both of them, which kind of pisses off uh, Cena a little bit, so they keep going at it, and then Jamie Noble and Jerry Mercury are holding back Dean, or attempt to, as Seth starts running to the back, and then Seth and Cena stand tall in the ring, and then Chip Rick and Stephanie come out, Stephanie says, well, we're not going to let this show dissolve into a clusterfuck before it even starts, so... She says that Seth let his ego drive his brain, just like Dean and Cena have just done. 
And then the game Triple H says that they both orchestrate that Cena and Ambrose both orchestrated this attack on Seth. And if they want a piece of Seth Rollins so bad, well, you know, we're gonna give you the opportunity because the authority stands for our opportunity. So Seth asks the fans if Cena and Dean want to get their hands on Rollins. So of course the fans, a bunch of marks they are, you know, to cheer. And then Triple H asks him again, like using a DX kind of reference, like, I said, do you want to see uh, Dean Ambrose uh, and John Cena uh, fight Seth Rollins? Uh. You know, you know. every time I try to do a Triple H impression, I sound like a freaking Baptist priest. You must praise uh, Jesus Christ! Uh. You know, but that's just me. But then, um, so the fans cheer again, and Triple H says, well, you're going to get your wish, and it's going to happen tonight. So he announces Dean Ambrose... And John Cena taking on Seth Rollins, Kane, and Randy Orton in a three-on-two handicap match. And then he wishes them luck. So, that's going to be our main event tonight. And the segment was okay. I give it 3.25 out of 5 stars. Alright, then we go back to last week when the Big Show ripped down the Russian flag. And then apologized on SmackDown. We find out that he was suspended. And he had to come out and basically apologize to the Russian people for what he did. And then we find out that Lana and Alexander... Rusev will respond to the Big Show later on. And Mike Mitchell Cole said that Big Show is getting sensitivity training. Okay. So, I give all that three out of five stars. Then we see the Usos and Dolph Ziggler taking on, will take on Cesaro and Gold Stardust next. So, we get to the match. And it starts off in a wild brawl that ends with a uh, Goldust sending Jay Uso hard into the steel steps, and it looks like he hurt his shoulder. We have to stop the match. But it doesn't stop. So, they get back in the ring, the match finally starts. Jay comes back on Cody. Cody stops with a punch to the gut, with a gut and a scoop slam. And then Jay comes back on Goldust with a crossbody block, but then the heels keep up momentum. Uh, so then starts beating up Jay in the corner. Jay comes back, hits a hot tag to his brother Jimmy, who starts beating up on Cesaro. And then they go to, they have a chop fest in the corner, but Jimmy wins that with, with the, uh, Rikishi butt splash in the corner. And then Cesaro comes back, and then all hell breaks loose again, as all, everybody's in the ring beating up each other, they go to the outside. And we hear that, we see Dolph get sent into the steps hard, and then the, uh, the heels all stand tall as we go to commercial. We come back, they keep control of Jimmy after the break, but then, uh, Jimmy makes a comeback. He gets a hot tag to Dolph Ziggler. He starts cleaning house as the fans, you know, going nuts. They were chanting his name the whole the whole match. He looks for the famous her, but Cesaro stops it. And then Dolph turns a Huracurano attempt into a sleeper hold from 1980s sleeper hold. Wow. But Cesaro broke free of that. And then Dolph sends Cesaro into the turnbuckle head first. And then he hits the famous her for two. And then Goldust gets sent to the outside, called us and stalled us, I should say. And then we hit the flying Usos, hit the dive, taking out the tag champs. And then Cesar hits a Tiger uppercut, which Jimmy breaks up like about two and seven eights. And then more chaos happens outside the ring. Cody runs into Dolph, and and he's left in, alone in the ring with Dolph and the Usos, and they triple super kick him in the mouth. Yikes! You know. And then Jimmy goes up to the top, hits the Superfly Splash on the Cody for the win. You know, it was a wild and crazy match. It was pretty good for what it was worth. So I gave it 3.25 out of 5 stars. Then we see a video of Cena, uh, John Cena on the Today Show with Kathleen and Hoda talking about the Susan G. Coleman Foundation. And they found it boring. And then we find out that Kathleen and Hoda, and Hoda are going to be on the show. Why? Then we get to Adam Rose and the Rosebuds, including Mandy Leone of CCW and RH. She was in that little cat uh, thing with her you know, black shirt. If you didn't see her, you missed it. And I think another one of the RH jobbers was there, the ring crew guys, I think, was there. I could have he looked, looked familiar, but whatever. So he comes out with Kathleen Holder in pink, freaking Ric Flair like robes. So then um, they take him off. They're in pink. Freaking dresses, cause of breast cancer we're in this month for this month. So Adam welcomes them to Raw and says, Well, we're gonna have a party! Blah blah blah. So So they have champagne or some something from Kathy Lee's Kathy Lee's whorehouse. So Holder's like, Oh, we're all happy to be be on Raw and we're all ready to party. 
So then Kathy gets a cheap puff on the Brooklyn Crown and says, Oh, my mom is from Brooklyn. Nobody fucking cares. Uh, then Hoda says that nobody parties harder, harder, parties harder than, than the people of Raw. Then they toast the fans with some boring shit. Nobody cares. And then Hoda says they can't have fun in the show, on their show, but they can have fun on Raw. Okay. And then tell, and then Kathy tells Hoda to do, do her crazy dance and then says, well, I'm not going to do it unless the music's cranked up. So they put on some stupid karaoke style music. Then Ho does does worse dancing than Emma, and Emma was on the show tonight. Uh, because it was worse. So then Kathy Lee and Hoda break the wine glass bottles over their asses. And then Adam Rose says, "Well, you know, you girls will fit right in here with the WWE. Yeah, put them on NXT. No, well, don't put them on NXT. Leave them on superstars." And then Adam Rose does his uh, trust. Fall into the, his rosebuds, and then Holder and Kathleen do the same. You know, Kathleen comes like, I don't know what to do. Okay, you know, I found this segment to be lame, and I went to take a shit. I came back, it was still going on, so I gave it a lame ass duck of one out of five stars. All right, then we get uh, a wide promo about Luke Harper, the same one we saw last week on SmackDown main event, and Raw, and us, and Raw. And then we get to a video showing of uh, Bo Dallas taking on Mark Henry from last week's Raw. Bo winning with the Bulldog. And then getting, getting beat up afterwards by Mark Henry in the back. And then uh, we find out that he got a DQ finish on Mark Henry on main event. So he's up 2 nothing, And we're going to get a third match between these guys. Match number two. This match was... Eh, it was okay. Uh, Henry started off strong. But then Bo regroups on the outside. Henry comes out after him. He slams him into the announce table. Then he throws him into the barricade. Or actually, he sends him back first into the steel pole. Then he sends him into the barricade. Then Henry starts ripping up the announce table. He tries for a world's strongest slam, but uh, Bill Dallas, uh got out of it. He gets back in the ring right before the 10 count. So he wins by a count out. So he's 3 0 or 3 and bow on Mark Henry. Henry starts looking. Looks like he's about to kill him. He's pissed and goes after him, but then Bo leaves up the ramp with Henry fast in pursuit. I'm not liking this storyline. I don't like this feud. If they have another match on, on main event or SmackDown, I'm gonna throw up. That was it. All right, then we find out once again that Lana and Rusev are gonna respond to the Big Show. We're gonna hear from Roman Reigns talking about his future, and that's basically it. So then we uh, get a recap of the opening segment with Seth Rollins, Dean Ambrose, and. Cena and the three-on-two handicap match that was announced for later. So then Dean Ambrose comes out for a promo and he says he couldn't sit in the back any longer and something is bothering him. So what's bothering him is John Cena. You know, he talks about Cena being up in his all up in his space again and he doesn't like it. And he says Cena may be his partner tonight, unlike how he was on SmackDown when Cena ran ran off um to fight Rollins, leaving Dean Ambrose to get beat up by Kane and Orton. And of course that was a DQ finish. And then he got left to die. And then he, tells, he told Cena, don't give him a reason not to like him. And he says he's trying really, really hard to like him. But he's not. You know. Uh, he says, but before the tag match happens, he wants to talk to Cena and end this little spat between them. So Cena comes out. And then the fans are going, John Cena sucks! You know, chanting, you know, singing along with his crappy theme song that hasn't been changed in ten years so Cena comes out, he talks about the fans booing him and the fans cheering Dean Ambrose and the you know, fans doing doing chants and all that stuff. Uh then he talks about how he wants to get his hands on Seth and how he launched himself and how Dean launched himself on the, him earlier. But then he he tells Dean that he agrees with his intentions like Dean does Dean does and says, Well, we're both clear that we both want Seth Rollins ass, basically. And that's kinda of gay, but whatever. Uh then he says he doesn't give a crap about him and so does Cena. Well, I don't give a crap about you. I don't give a crap about you either. So then he says they don't care what anybody else thinks of them. He says maybe they can coexist for one night, but has no problem kicking his ass right now and taking out the authority by himself. So then Cena gets back in the ring. He's like, you are going to take the authority on by yourself? Remember what they did five weeks ago by putting your head through cinder blocks? Mm -hmm. Then he says Dean has something that others don't, and that's guts. He has the guts to say and do whatever he wants, but it has consequences, like everything, every other thing. A reaction leads, an action leads to a 
reaction, like simple E C M E equals M C squared, whatever. Then he says he has no problem dropping Dean on his ass, and then warns Dean not to give him a, give him a reason to not like him. And Dean's like, you know what? I'm hungry. I'm gonna hop on a D train and go to Coney Island, grab me some Nathan's hot dogs, go on the cyclone, and maybe look at the and check out the Wonder World, and that's it. So he leaves. So that was pretty funny. I gave the segment three and a half out of five stars. So then we get a recap of what happened. We see Dean uh, going going down the Seventh Avenue. I don't know how he got the Seventh Avenue. He must have walked down the Seventh Avenue, and he gets on the Q train <laughs> going to Coney Island. And I was I'm like, why didn't the the camera crew go with him to Coney Island. That would have been great. It would have been like New Jack back in the ECW days when he was on the Bron he was waiting for uh uh Angel and uh uh what's his name? Uh Vic Grimes on the on the uh I think it was on the four train and then he's taught he's doing a promo and then we see Vic Grimes and Angel on the other side, you know, giving him the finger. And then that later led on to them basically beating the crap out of New Jack on the tr on the uh, the platform. I thought they were gonna kill New Jack right there, you know. But what are you gonna do? That's old ECW. Check it out on the network for nine ninety nine. Whatever. But <laughs> that was pretty fun. So like I said, we see him getting on the train, and that leads to John Cena in the back, and Triple H greets him. He's like, "Ooh, you don't have a partner tonight." Uh. So he talks about Dean not getting it and how they gave him the opportunity to team with Cena in the main event only to go up, go leave the arena to go get a hot dog. And Triple H says that Dean left him hanging and now it's going to be a three-on-one handicap match. And you feel sorry for Cena, but the Cena Nation will have Cena's back as usual. And soon Cena will use his super Cena strength to kick out a two and win, most likely. So Cena says that, says, you know, the authority is always protecting Seth Rollins. He says he'll do whatever it takes to go through Kane and Orton just to get to Seth. And then Triple H's like, yeah, I like that idea. So he says Seth Rollins is going to start the match with Cena, you know, in the main event. Then he wishes him luck, and then he mocks his crappy new shirt, which says, keep calm and never give up. And his little pink shirt, pink, gray and pink shirt. So it was okay. I gave it three out of five stars. So we'll see what happens in the main event. All right, match number three, Brie Bella taking on Summer Rae with one hand behind her back. You know, we've seen this before with Nikki. They did the same thing. Uh... This was a boring ass Divas match. Uh, Summer Rae was beating up Brie to start, but Nikki came back as I mean not Nikki Brie came back as Nikki was watching from the ramp. Uh, we get some Derek Jeter chants because uh, you know it's in Brooklyn. I'm surprised it wasn't with you know all the Bronx people started coming to Brooklyn, started chanting for Derek Jeter. You know I was I was waiting for a sucks chant. You know Derek Jeter sucks from the Mets crowd. You know it's a bipartisan crowd. But we didn't get it. So B makes a comeback. She hits some stiff kicks. And then she gets a win with, I guess, a kick. Okay. And Nikki's all devastated. She can't believe that Brie won. So Brie wins. She does the yes chant with the crowd. And the crowd goes nuts. So I gave it a usual not uh, Divas 2 out of 5 stars. All right. We go to the back. We see Kane in the back. And we see a fruit basket there. And then Miz and his stunt double, Damian Mizdow, come in, they say they gave it to him because they're sorry for what they said about him last week. And Kane's like, well, I don't want to hear your apologies, and I see right through you. And then Miz says that he can't appreciate... Why can't you appreciate our apology? We're a bunch of job me card jobbers. We try to get up to the main rush, uh, to the main event. But whatever. So, uh, Kane then talks about Miz hitting Sheamus with a chair last, uh, last week on SmackDown, and he calls both of them dense. Then he puts uh, Miz in a match with Sheamus and says Miz will be eating a bro kick later. And then Santa's like, okay, takes the takes the uh, fruit basket and goes, huh, and then leaves. So I'm like, okay, what was the point of the segment? And I didn't like it, so I gave it a uh, I gave it two out of five stars. All right, match number four, Jack Swagger, we the people. Taking on Tyson Kidd with his lovely wife, Natalia, at ringside. You know, they're still having problems. I don't know if it's real-life marital problems or it's just a storyline that they're doing from... They bought over from uh, Total total Crap... I mean, Total Divas. So, this match was meh. You know, Tyson started using his speed to dodge swag, but swagger him with a clothesline. Then he does his... We! The people! Taunt. So, then Tyson retreats to the safety of Natalia and he uses her as a shield... Uh, 
and he uses that as a, as a distraction to send Jack Swagger hard into the steps. But then Swagger comes back, he tries for a Patriot lock, but Tyson gets the ropes. Then he hits a kick. Uh, he tries to go up top, and Swagger just launches himself. He does his best Shelton X Benjamin impersonation. Then he th- hits a throw off the top rope, and then right there, right from there, he locks in the Patriot lock, and Tyson's trying to get to the ropes, but then he taps out. So, Swagger wins, and, you know, Tyson's still upset. He looks at Natty all pissed off. I eh, really don't care. But nice to see Swagger win, get back to his winning ways. So I gave the match 2.25 out of 5 stars. All right, there we see Edge and Christian uh, doing a little segment. Uh, they're showing them um, they're going to be reuniting on 50, the, the SmackDown 15th anniversary of of awesome, that's going to reek of awesomeness, which is happening right now on the stupid ass network. You know, I was hoping they would be on SmackDown, you know, because it is the 15th anniversary of SmackDown this Friday night, only on Sci Fi. So hopefully they'll be on there. Maybe we'll get us, get a, for those, for those of you with flash photography, we're going to get a five second pose. <laughs> this is my five second pose. All right, from there we get a Roman Reigns interview. Uh, Mitchell Cole talks about Reigns' sur- uh, he came out of surgery and asks him how he is. Reigns says that well things are a lot better and the doctors are working on his progression, 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 and he can still move around. He's feeling a lot better. He says not being in Brooklyn with the fans stinks, but it's only a matter of time before he returns to the WWE. Oh, you humble. Um. He says, with the right attitude and the right focus, it might happen sooner rather than later. So maybe it won't happen at the Royal Rumble. Maybe it might happen at Hell in a Cell. Maybe, by doubt, doubtful. I'm thinking he might come back at the Survivor Series or TLC. You know, it depends, you know, how his, you know, his rehab goes. But you never know. He might be, he might be at, at Hell in a Cell. But we'll see. So I gave that little, it was a short segment. I was like, okay. You know, Roman Reigns, you know, needs mics. He needs a lot of mic work. He really does. So, I gave it a standard 3 out of 5 stars. It was okay. Then we get... Oh, boy. I'm going to I'm gonna use the video game Box of Doom on this one. This, this, this next match, I don't know why it was on. Going back to the G-era bullshit. El... Oh, I don't have... I don't have uh, a doll. So it's El Torito taking on Mini Gator. Otherwise known as Hornswoggle. You know, so Los, Los Matadors come out for El Dorito. Slater Gator come out for Mini Gator Hornswoggle. This match fucking sucked. And I don't blame the fans for chanting Derek Jeter. This is boring. I don't know what else they would chant. Probably bullshit. Or, I don't know. This match sucked. I mean, basically El Dorito used the, the uh, bull... The, uh, what do you call it? The, the bull thing... Whatever the cover horn swaggle in the cape, temporary and blinded him, and then he slated got on the ring. He's like, "Hey, what are you doing?" So he gets in the ring, and then, you know, El Torito pulls back the thing, and then horn swaggle uh, grabs Heat Slater and does the Gator roll, and then El Torito uh, throws horn swaggle into, into Heat Slater and Titus O'Neil. Then he hits a triple jump splash. Uh, Onto Hornswoggle for the win. Why was this on the show? They could have put it on main event. They could have put it on superstars. Not on the main shows. Please. This is boring. This whole thing with Lost Matadores, Horn, uh, and El Torito, and Slater Gator, and Hornswoggle. Nobody fucking cares. I'm sorry. And I'm going to do it right now. By the way, buy Assassin's Creed 4 Black Flag. Only on PS4. Ugh, dud. I could not stand this. I couldn't stand it. I wanted to just, you know, I turned, I turned to Gotham, and then I turned to, I, you know, I just, I, was, I, I turned this off, and I was watching Gotham at this point. You know, a better show than this bullshit. So it was a dud. So we got a recap of the Big Show's apology on SmackDown, and we find out that tomorrow night on. The main event on, only on the WWE crap work. I mean, network. We're gonna we find out that Bo Dallas gets an Intercontinental Title match against Dolph Ziggler. Oh, I guess we're gonna win, Dolph. So that was it. All right, then we get to what I think was the segment of the night. Uh, we get to uh, Lana and Alexander 
Rusev. Rusev smashed Lana Pussy. Yeah. So they come out, and Lana says that today is a great day as it's the birthday of Vladimir Putin. He's 900 years old. Yeah. So, well, happy birthday to Mr. Vladimir Putin. Man, who cares? So then, he, then she tells the fans to stand up and give respect to President Rusev. And then she says there will be no match tonight with the big show. And then she talks about the big show being suspended for his words toward the Russian people and says that he should be in jail for, for, um, and tells the fans that they committed a hate crime by supporting the big show. Okay. Then she says the fans hate on Mother Russia. So the fans start chanting USA. And then she says, Shut up! Now I do that impersonation very, very good. And if you don't like it, suck my dick. So, then Russo gets on the mic, he starts talking in Bulgarian, Russian. You know? And the fans are chanting, what? You know? And then he finally talks in broken English and says that America is no superpower and is the USA is nothing. He says Big Show is afraid of him and he calls him out. But he doesn't come out, even though Big Show was there. Okay. So then Rooster calls him and the fans cowards. And then we hear the music of, If you smell what The Rock is cooking. So, you know, The Rock was rumored to be on the show, but he was doing something with Time Warner. He was in the city, but, you know, WWE doesn't promote him. But he was there, and it was shocking, you know, that he came out. And this segment basically saved Raw. Ladies and gentlemen, this saved Raw, and I love this segment. So he gets a massive freaking pop, as only The Rock can. He comes out in a, in a, in a, like a vest, not a vest, like a jacket with Brooklyn NYC on the back. So he comes out and um, he tells both Ron and Russo to know your role and shut your mouth. So then he talks about that he, he was in Miami, he went to the gym, he was clanging and banging, and then he, and then he mocks Russo and he had his shorts up to his nipples. Okay. And then he says after he was done, he got on a plane to New York City. And he says his jet landed in Queens. He took a cab to Manhattan. Then he visited Lana's favorite place, the Meatpacking District. <laughs> God. Oh, boy. Then he says he jumped in the water. He swam over to Staten Island, which got a lot of booze. Then he says he jumped on a four train and he headed to the Bronx to pay respect to Derek Jeter. And he, you know, the fans carried Derek Jeter's name again. Oh, boy. Then after that, he crossed a historic bridge. I'm thinking he crossed the, uh, the uh, George Washington Bridge. Then he drove down Atlantic Avenue and came to the Barclay Center. Then he does, Finally! Wait. Finally! The Rock has come back to Brooklyn! So he does that. Uh, and then Lana tells The Rock, Who the hell do you think you are interrupting the great Alexander Rusev? So then Lana tells him to, Shut up! So then Rock says, uh, to stop dressing like a Soviet streetwalker. <laughs> then Russo tells Rock that he's garbage and he said, You don't leave this evening, I will crush you. You know, then Rock starts laughing. He says, You know, you need to back up a little bit because your breath smells like Chewbacca's dirty bee bag. <laughs> oh my god. Uh, so then he says, Lana looks gorgeous in person. And she says, he says we, you know, she, sa she says that she is smoking. But then he says it looks like someone put their spin off up in her Putin. <laughs> God. Oh, my God. Then the Rock tells Rusev, It doesn't matter what you think. And he tells him nobody can beat Rus Rusev. That He says nobody can beat Rusev because he's tall and he's strong and he's faster. And that's a fact. Then Rock tells him another fact. And he says... It says that both him and Lana run down the USA, and the fans boo him for supporting Russia. Um, he says they boo him because they're both a-holes. You know, then Lana tells him, just like Vladimir Putin, he says, uh, just like Putin says, Rusev is hungry, okay, and Rusev looks ready to fight. And then Rock says, just, well, just like Jay-Z once said, allow me to introduce myself. My name is Ho. You know, H to the O-V. You know. Love that song. Then The Rock uses his catchphrase. And he says, I'm the jabroni beating, pie eating. You know, all that other stuff that he usually says. And then he, and then he punches Rusev. You know, hits the smackdown punch on um, Rusev. Knocks him out of the ring. Then he, then he does his 
customary if you smell now what the rock is cooking and then he leaves so it was a great segment i gave it 4.25 out of five stars uh i don't know where this is going to lead to if i thought it was going to lead to a scene uh scene rusev's rock little few but i don't think it's going to happen because rock's not going to come back you know He's probably, he probably won't come back for another 10 years. We probably won't see him again. Probably till WrestleMania 36 or something like that. I don't know. But it was shocking to see him and really saved Raw. So, it was great. So, then we see a recap of Dean and the Dean Ambrose and Cena segment where Dean heads to Coney Island. I don't know why they didn't follow him. But that's just me. Then we go to match number six, Divas Tag Team Match. And Paige and her best friend, Alicia Fox, take it on AJ Lee. That ass! And her partner... Emma? And you could tell that AJ was not liking this, and I don't blame her for what she did. So AJ started the match, attacking Alicia Fox to start. She throws her in the page, sends Paige to the floor, then she sends Alicia to the floor, and then stalks him for a while. So then AJ comes in, she tags in Emma, and then basically AJ just well, like, it was like this on the match. She didn't care. So Alicia comes back, Throws her out of the ring, but Emma holds on, and then she does her usual crap, and then almost gets the win with a roll-up. And then she starts dancing, and tries to be Emma might sandwich that little uh, splash under, in, under the uh, first turnbuckle, but, but at least she kicks her in the corner. She misses a charge, uh, Emma locks in the tarantula, then she hits the Emma might sandwich, and then she starts dancing again, and AJ's like, oh, God. And then she does her best CM Punk impersonation, and just walks out of the match. And then Paige gets t tagged in, hits a straight roundhouse, straight kick to the mouth. Then she hits the rampage for the win. Match was boring. I gave it its usual Divas two out of five stars. I, you know, and then AJ was looking back and just like, you know, shaking her head. And um, she, which what AJ should have done was just walk out of the match, walk out of the arena, and never come back. That's what she should have done. But eh, we'll see. Alright, then we get a new Wyatt video, this time promoting Eric Rowan. So we see Bray Wyatt talking about him. He says, only the strong survives. And he says that he fixed Eric Rowan, just like he did with Luke Harper. And everybody should fear him. And then we hear Eric Rowan says, don't apologize. So then Bray says that Rowan is now set free, just like Luke Harper was. And then he's, and then uh, Bray Wyatt says that uh, we, we should fear him and fear the smoke of his burden, something like that. So... Looks like we're getting the breakup of the Wyatt, Wyatt family, and each one's going to go to separate ways. I think Luke Harper's going to be the star of it. You know, I don't know what's going to happen with Bray Wyatt. Triple H has a lot of faith in him. He's standing behind him. So I'm hoping that Bray Wyatt turns babyface and starts getting, like, a maybe a U.S. title push. That I don't think he really needs it. I think he should go for the IC title or maybe the world title. And maybe Harper can get an uh, IC title, U.S. title push. Rowan, I guess, get the same thing, but I think Rowan's going to be the odd man out here. But that's just my opinion. Alright, so I get that 3 out of 5 stars. Then we find out that today is Bruno San Martino's 79th birthday, so happy birthday to the legend, Bruno San Martino. Alright, we get the match number 7, Miz picking on Sheamus. This match was boring. Uh, Sheamus, uh, ask, excuse me, Miz wins with a roll-up, you know, after Sandow gets kicked in the face with a bro kick. You know, so I gave that three out of five stars. I guess Miz is now going to get a U.S. title match in the next, you know, on SmackDown or probably at Hell in a Cell, and nobody will give a crap. So then from there, we get a recap of Hogan's uh, breast cancer segment from last week. We found out that Joan London, former host of Good Morning America, will speak about her battle with breast cancer. So she comes out and Lola mentions some of the breast cancer survivors. So, Joel Nolan comes out, she thanks everyone, and the Susan G. Coleman Foundation for speaking about breast cancer. And basically, she says it's a challenging journey, we shouldn't be ashamed of it. If we're honest with ourselves and our families, we can overcome this. You know, early detection is the key. Uh, and then she, uh, she introduces uh, some breast cancer survivors who were in the crowd one by one, and says they are the true warriors, and asks the fans to help out the foundation so they can help those who are dealing with the disease and hopefully you know, make it a thing in the past and find a cure. So it's just a hype promo for the foundation in Breast Cancer Awareness Month. So I gave it two out of five stars. So, I, I thought what it was, what it was. All right, then we get to the main event, three-on-one, Cena taking on Orton, Seth, and Kane of the Authority. 
This match was okay. Uh, Seth and Cena started up, and then Seth Rollins tied in the cane. And then all three members of the authority start beating up on Cena. Cena comes back with his usual five moves of bullshit. He goes for the AA on Seth, but Kane comes in to kick Cena in the head, causing a disqualification. Okay, the finish sucked. I gave it two and a half out of five stars. Cena then starts to get beating up by the authority. Kane hits a choke slam. Then Orton starts mocking, mocking the fans. You can't see me. Then Orton looks for the RKO. When then Dean Ambrose returns from Coney Island. I guess he was only there for like a half hour. And he comes out with a hot dog cart. And he takes one of the hot dogs and starts eating it. And then Kane and Orton go to meet him. And then Dean Ambrose meets him at the cross at, at, uh, at the pass. And he has a mustard and ketchup uh, thing, almost like a gun. And he starts spraying them with ketchup and mustard. That was pretty funny. Then he throws the hot dog cart on them. And that was pretty funny. And then Dean gets in the ring. He starts beating up on Seth Rollins. But Orton and Kane come back in, making it a three-on-two. Cena takes out Seth. He throws him over the, over the the ropes. Then he hits the AA to Orton. Clotheslines Kane over, over the ropes. Oh, excuse me. And then Dean hits a dive to the outside on the set. He throws sauerkraut and all the other stuff on the on the Seth Rollins. <laughs> that was pretty cool. Then he grabs a hot, the hot dog tongs and then whoop, testicular tongue claw to the nuts of Seth Rollins. Ow! Jeez, I was having flashbacks of CCW and ECW right there. With a Ugh. It was pretty f extreme right there. Uh, and then Kane comes in to save Seth Rollins, but then, you know, he goes in the ring, he, he eats an AA from Cena. And then Triple H and Stephanie come out. Triple H says that, it, well, that was an impressive mess that we just saw. I mean, what point it was. And then says Cena and Dean are on the same page for once, but they still want to fight Seth. So he says that they're going to get their chance and fight each other at Hell in a Cell. So he announces Dean Ambrose and uh, Cena... At Hell in a Cell with the winner taking on Seth Rollins inside Hell in a Cell. So, you know, we heard about this, you know, earlier in the week, last week, too, that this match was going to happen. I thought it was going to be, you know, the loser faces Randy Orton, but they might put that in next week or week before, after that. I don't know. So then, then Stephanie says that either Cena or Dean will go straight to Hell. So that was it. And then Ambrose, you know... And Cena is still in the rain, and Ambrose hits Cena with a double underhook, underhook DDT on a uh, McFoley. The fans going nuts. They chant, yes, yes, yes. So, and that ends Raw. So, Dean Ambrose gets a little uh, retribution for what for having Cena leave him out to dry last, uh, last week on SmackDown. I'm probably predicting that Cena is going to do the same thing next week, and then, you know, We'll see what happens from there. But that's the start, the build to Hell in a Cell is beginning. So it starts off with some good hype. So about freaking time. But they got two weeks to hype up more matches. You only got basically one, maybe two matches. You know, the you know Dean versus Cena. Winner goes on to Hell in a Cell. I'm predicting a three-way Hell in a Cell match at the, as the main event. Dean taking on Seth, taking on Cena. And I hope, basically, Seth Rollins beat the shit out of both of them. But that's just my opinion. But we'll see what happens from there. So, it was a decent uh, Raw. I gave it 6.25 out of 5 stars. Like I said, the uh, Dean Ambrose promos once again saved, saved Raw. The Rock segment really saved Raw from an utter shit. So, once again, you know, Raw starts off like shit. It starts off hot, goes to shit. We get a good segment from either Dean Ambrose or this time The Rock saves the show. We get a decent ending. And that's what it was. So I gave it 6.25 out of 10 stars. Leave me your thoughts and your comments down below. What you guys thought of Raw? What you see happening and maybe at Hell in a Cell? You think it's going to be a three-way like I think it's going to be? Just leave me your comments and your uh, thoughts and opinions down below. Subscribe to my channels, all four of them, uh, down below. Uh, check out my uh, burial of that piece of ch shaggy-haired wanker Mark Pearson part two is coming tomorrow and he will get buried deeper into the ground so check that out like the video sus uh, subscribe to all my channels share this video all over the internet Google Plus Facebook Twitter Tumblr everywhere else and keep up the support keep up the subscribers gaining subscribers almost every day now you know it's a slow process but I'm gaining so it's, I'm good it's good as long as I keep getting views and subscribers. I'm never going to leave YouTube. So, sorry, haters. 
So anyway, thank you all for watching. I'm going to grab a late night snack before I go to bed. So thank you all for watching. I'm Peter Gomez signing off. Peace.